Hello there and welcome to this video on the Daystate Huntsman Revere. In this video we're going to be detailing a full disassembly of the rifle as well as giving you any information you need as we walk through the process. On your screen now you'll see a full list of all the tools that we'll need to carry out this disassembly. It includes all the allen key sizes, all the spanner sizes as well as any Daystate specific tooling required. With that out of the way, this particular rifle is a regulated 177 sub 12 foot pound rifle although the information in this video will also be relevant to other calibers and also the FAC models. With that said, we can begin work on the rifle. The first thing we're going to do is remove our magazines and also fire the rifle in a nice safe direction. So we don't have one fitted here, but what we'll do, cock the rifle, fire it into a nice safe backstop. That ensures that the rifle is now unloaded, decocked and ready to work on. The next thing we'll do is take a note of the regulator set pressure, which is this gauge in the bottom here, and on our rifle it's set to 100 bar. We're going to make a note of that as we will need to reset the regulator to the same point when we go to reassemble the rifle. With that done, the first thing we'll do is remove the stock. That's simply done by flipping the rifle up, locating this bolt in the bottom, and removing it using a 5mm Allen key. With the bolt removed, the stock can be nice and gently lifted off the action and put safely to one side. Next up, we're going to degas the rifle. So to degas the rifle, we need to flip the rifle on its end, then using a 22mm spanner, we need to crack the gauge loose. After about half a turn or so on the gauge, the rifle should start leaking pressure out from the gauge area. Then, once the hissing has stopped, we take a good look at both gauges to make sure that they're reading both zero. So as we see on the bottom red gauge there, it's reading zero, as is the pressure gauge in the end. And we now know that the rifle is fully degassed, and we can finish removing the gauge on the bottom. And there we have it there. So this assembly can be disassembled further. So we have a small doughty washer on the base there, we have the gauge on the top, then this connecting section. If we put the connecting section in a vise with some nice soft jaw protection, we can unscrew the gauge. I've just very quickly done that off camera, and as you can see the gauge just comes off nice and easily. We do have a doughty washer on the bottom of the gauge, which seals on this face here. Next thing we'll do is remove the barrel band. To remove the barrel band, we simply need to remove the end cap for the gauge, so this piece here. Nice and carefully, it is held on by just O-rings, so it is able to be pulled off nice and carefully. And then by using a 1.5mm Allen key, we're just going to loosen and remove the three grub screws that secure the barrel band. With the three grub screws removed, the barrel band can be slid off the end of the cylinder. Nice and carefully as it does ride over a couple O-rings. Once that's done, we'll remove the shroud from the rifle, and that's done by removing these two grub screws. So one in this side here, the other in this side here, and we're going to do that using a 1 16th Allen key. With the grub screws removed, the shroud can be simply slid off the barrel. And there we have it here. This can be further disassembled if we remove the thread protector on the end. And then use a nice wide flat bladed screwdriver like this one. We'll remove the end cap. These can be done up quite tight from the factory. Next up we can tap the O-ring out the end. And then finally, using a set of small pin nose pliers, we can remove the end cap from the inside the shroud. There we have that piece there. So that's the shroud fully disassembled. It does have a piece in the end here, although this is normally bonded in from the factory. So if you needed to remove that, you would need to heat this unit up by the use of a hot air gun or something similar, and then remove the aluminium piece in the end. We're going to be leaving it in situ for now, as we don't need to remove it. Next thing we'll do is separate the top half of the block from the bottom. To do that, we simply need to remove the six securing screws from the top, 
First off, using a 2.5mm Allen key, we'll remove these two screws here. Next, using a nice flat bladed screwdriver to remove the two slotted bolts in the middle of the block. And then finally, using the Daystate anti temper removal tool, we'll remove the two triangle headed bolts that are located in the back of the block. With all of those bolts removed, we can lift the top block up from the bottom one and gently lay it on its side like so. As you take the two halves of the block apart, just make sure that none of the small pieces get lost. So we have an O-ring in this bottom section here, just in this hole. We also have a brass transfer pull and another O-ring in the top section of the block. So if we tip the bolts out, get them put away nice and safely over to one side. We can then use a pair of tweezers to remove this brass section here. And also the small o-ring that's present in the barrel. So there are them two pieces there. With that done we'll stick the bottom half of the rifle over to one side and concentrate on the top half. The first thing we'll do is remove the barrel and to do that we need to remove the four retaining grub screws using a two mill allen key. There's four grub screws, two on the bottom and then another two on the top. As you remove the grub screws just make a little note the two in the bottom are slightly shorter than the two in the top. So if we take a look at them there these two are the ones that came out the top and then the bottom two there are the ones that came out the bottom. With those removed we can simply pull the barrel out from the block and then we'll stick this nice and safely to one side. This particular barrel doesn't use a transfer pull o-ring in the end of the barrel there. The o-ring is located on the pellet probe instead of inside the barrel, so just here. Next thing we'll do is remove the cocking arm and the pellet probe. So first thing we'll do is flip the block up and remove the cocking dog. We're going to do that by using a 3 30 seconds allen key. There we have the cocking dog there. Next we'll remove this back cap by using a 2mm allen key and removing this bolt in the back of the block. With that done we'll just gently tap the block in order to remove this back section here. So we'll stick that to one side. Next up we're going to remove the cocking handle. To do that we're going to be using a 2.5mm allen key in this top bolt here. Next up we'll remove the cover from the side of the block using a 2.5mm allen key to remove this bolt here. With that removed we can tip the block over and remove the cover piece. Next we'll come through the side of the block and remove this screw here by the use of a 2.5mm allen key. With that removed we can lift up the cocking arm and remove this piece from the side of the pellet probe. Up next we'll use a 2.5mm allen key to remove this bolt here. And then the cocking arm can be removed. As you remove the cocking arm just make sure this little bush here doesn't get lost. With that the last thing we can do is slide the pellet probe out from the back of the block. Nice and simply like so. And there we have the pellet probe. With that done that's the top block fully disassembled so we'll put this over to one side and get started on the bottom half of the rifle. Getting started with the bottom half of the rifle, the first thing we're going to do is remove the air cylinder. That's simply done by unscrewing it from the valve housing here. With that unscrewed, the next thing we'll do is remove the regulator from the back of the cylinder here. To do that, we're going to be using an M5 bolt, screwing it into the bottom of the regulator, and then pulling the regulator out from the cylinder. There we have it. There's our regulator. We will be further disassembling the regulator very shortly. For now though, we'll continue on with the air cylinder and the next thing we're going to remove is the fill assembly. To do that we're going to be using a 7mm punch through the fill hole here and then unscrewing the end from the air cylinder. And there we have the air cylinder, so we'll put that to one side. 
Next thing we'll remove is the one way present in the bottom of this little device here. So to begin with, we'll remove the filter by using a flat bladed screwdriver. Tip out the small filter and this little spacer washer here. And then we can remove the one way valve that's present in the bottom here. Now to do this, we're going to gently pressurize the unit. What we're going to do is using our fill probe connected up to our dive cylinder, going to push the fill probe into the unit like so. And then incredibly carefully, what we're going to do is momentarily pressurize the unit to drive the one way valve out from the bottom here. Now it's essential if you end up needing to do this, that you put this device on a nice sturdy platform like a table and don't try and stop it with your hand. Put it on a nice sturdy platform and then very, very, very carefully open the valve to your dive cylinder. And in doing so, we should push the one way valve out from the bottom there. And the last thing we'll remove from this unit here is the gauge. So we're going to bring back our punch and using a 22 mil spanner, we'll crack the gauge loose and unscrew it from the end. And there we have that. So that's going to be it for this piece. We'll bring back the regulator. And here we have the regulator. So before we start taking the regulator apart, we're going to take a quick measurement using a set of calipers. We're going to be measuring from the top of the adjuster screw to the top of the reg body here. And on this rifle, it seems to be around 3.2, 3.17, that sort of region. So we know that when the regulator is set at this position, we're getting about 100 bar on the reg set pressure. We need to know that as when we go to rebuild the regulator, we can set it to that measurement that we just took. And we know that the regulator is going to be set roughly to what it was before we took it apart. So just taking a quick measurement there. We can also see that on this regulator, it does have a small Sharpie mark where the adjuster screw lines up with the regulator body. But with that measured and that noted, we can take the adjuster screw out by the use of a nice wide flat bladed screwdriver. And then once it's unscrewed, we can gently pull the adjuster screw out from the body, being nice and careful not to catch the O-ring on the threads. With that done, we can remove the snap ring in the bottom of the regulator using some snap ring pliers. And then we can bring back our M5 bolt, lightly screw that into the bottom of the piston and gently pull that out. As you pull that out, just make sure that the small white sealing disc that's present in the body there doesn't get lost and also that the Belleville washers don't get lost. As you can see on this regulator piston, there are six Belleville washers cupped in alternating pairs. But there we have it there. The last thing we'll do is just gently push out the sealing disc from the inside the reg body. And there we have it. We'll stick all of this to one side and continue on with the rest of the rifle. Next up, we'll tackle this assembly here. The first thing we'll do is remove the stock bolt attachment and we're going to be doing that using a 11mm spanner to loosen this nut here and then use a 3mm allen key to remove the small grub screw in the base there. Next up we'll remove the trigger housing. So to begin with we'll remove the trigger guard. We're going to do that by the use of a flat bladed screwdriver to remove the two securing screws. As you take that off, just make sure that you don't lose either of the small nuts that hold the trigger guard onto the trigger housing. Next up, we'll start disassembling the trigger. The first thing we'll do is remove this screw in the bottom here using a two and a half mil Allen key. And then with that done, we can remove the small spacer in between the trigger. So this piece here using a set of needle nose pliers. Here we have it. Next up, the trigger sears can be removed from the trigger housing, and we're going to be pushing the pins out with a two millimeter punch. So starting off with this one at the back, pushing this one out will allow us to take the trigger blade out. The next one is this one here. And that will remove the first sear. And then finally, this pin here will remove the last sear. 
there we have it and then finally we can remove the housing using a flat bladed screwdriver to remove the three bolts in the bottom here next up we'll remove the hammer and the hammer spring assembly first thing we'll do though is remove the safety which is done by removing the two securing grub screws one in either side from the back here as you remove these grub screws just make sure that you keep a nice amount of pressure on the safety back cap so that the hammer spring doesn't force it off out of your hand here we have it with the safety and the hammer spring next we'll remove the hammer to do that we need to remove this screw in the top using a two and a half mil allen key with that removed the hammer can be just slid out the back next up we'll disassemble the hammer now it's highly unlikely that you'll ever need to disassemble the hammer for any reason although we will do it for this video just to show you what's inside it the first thing we need to do is locate the small lock screw in the side there so if we grip hold of this brass piece here and gently rotate the hammer we can rotate it until this lock screw is observable next we can unscrew the lock screw taking that out nice and carefully next we can take a standard m4 bolt lightly screw it into the side until it stops then back it out half a turn then we can come through with a three millimeter allen key through the back here and then screw in so in other words tighten the small grub screw out from the front of the hammer and here we have the grub screw removed from the front of the hammer with the center section of the hammer removed we can now remove the two halves of the hammer from the hammer housing to do that we're going to screw our m4 bolt in a couple extra turns then we're going to come through in the back with a nice wide flat bladed screwdriver and get this brass section unscrewed now from the factory these are lock tighted in so it's advisable not to remove it unless you absolutely need to but I've already loosened the lock tight for the video with that done we can remove our M4 bolt and then tip the front half of the hammer out from the hammer assembly so there we have it and that's the hammer pretty much fully disassembled so we'll get this put over to one side and bring back the safety next up is the safety so to begin with we're going to remove this bolt from the bottom of the safety and to do that we're going to come through with a quarter inch spanner loosen the small lock nut then use a 3 30 seconds allen key to remove the bolt from the bottom with that done we can tip out this small anti-tamper pin from the base there and that anti-tamper pin simply blocks access to the hammer spring adjuster when the rifle's all built up next up we're going to take a 1.5 mil allen key and remove this screw from the end here with that removed we can use a set of tweezers to remove the spring and then the ball bearing behind it if the ball bearing is a little difficult to remove like it is on this rifle you can simply remove it by using a small stack of magnets next up we can come through with a nice wide flat bladed screwdriver and remove this screw from the back there we have the safety fully disassembled up next we can bring back the valve housing and get that disassembled the first thing we're going to do is remove this cap from the front of the unit by the use of some snap ring pliers so just getting the pins in the holes there then unscrewing it with that removed we can use a small set of tweezers to remove the valve return spring and then the valve from the middle there so this is the valve pin the valve seat is still in the rifle which is this piece here the last thing that can be removed from this section here is the small nut and o-ring in the base there so if we take a look at it there we have a small brass nut and an o-ring beneath that to remove that we're just going to use a nice long flat bladed screwdriver to unscrew the small nut 
and then we can tip both the nut and the small o-ring out from the center there and there we have it there's the rifle fully disassembled and that about does it for this particular video in the next video we'll cover a full reassembly of the rifle and then in separate videos we'll be covering how to adjust the power and how to adjust the trigger but for now we hope this video has been useful thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one